This is 3.09, number 24. It's a level four problem. We have a 20 kilogram box sliding down an incline and the coefficient of friction is given. So uh, again, let me try to use guide here. Um, mass is 20 kilograms. The mu k, uh, kinetic coefficient of friction is 0 0.350. Um, and some dimensions of the box are given, I mean, sorry, of the ramp are given as well. Uh, there's a, you know, I can redraw it over here. This is 0.7 meters, and this is 1.5 meters. Um, and it's starting at rest, so I guess V1 is zero. Um, I'll also do my best to draw a free body diagram. Um, as normal, gravity is pointing down here, and it's equal to mass times uh, G which is 200. However, um, for ramp problems, it's usually, um, instead of pretending that you know the x-axis is perfectly horizontal and the y-axis is perfectly, perfectly vertical, it tends to be a little easier to imagine the whole thing tilted a bit. So um, that's why we break down gravity here into these kind of tilted components. Instead of drawing gravity like that, I'm going to use the kind of tilted y-axis of 176.9. Uh, this is the f of gravity in the quote y direction. And then um, there's also this one here, that's the 93.3 um, newtons of gravity in our modified x direction. So again, the diagram given breaks that down for you, um, but it's easier to kind of treat your coordinate plane as slightly tilted when you consider all your forces. Um, and I think that'll become clear in a second. So again, this is an incomplete force diagram. There are other forces at play here. For example, um, well, which way is the box moving? I guess I can label the motion. The motion is happening kind of down the ramp. So I know that everything not along that axis um, you know, it's not starting to float or falling into the plane. So there must be some force here that's balancing the gravity. And because the box is on a ramp, that force is the normal force or the surface force. Um, so let me pencil that in, in yellow because it wasn't technically given in the problem. There is a normal force. It is perpendicular to and exiting from the surface. Um, and it's equal to 176.9 Newtons, just because it must balance. On the other hand, uh, there's also some other forces like friction that oppose motion. So friction should be in the, sorry, opposite direction as motion. But I'm not going to say that these two are just equal. That would be true only if it was at constant speed or at rest, but nothing in the problem says that to me. So instead, I'm going to use the formula, which I haven't written down yet, um, that friction is equal to mu times the normal force. And now that I have the normal force and I have mu, I can multiply them together to get friction. Um, and I think you get that friction is something like 61.9 Newtons. So this is a more complete force diagram. It has uh, gravity broken up into two components given in the problem. And then from the scenario, I figured out normal force as well as friction. Um, there's no additional pushing happening in this problem. Okay. Um, I think I've written most of the other stuff down. So let me go on to what is unknown. The problem is asking me for the speed at the bottom of the incline. So V, uh, you know, if you want to consider scenario one when the box is at the top of the ramp, and scenario two when it's at the bottom, then it's V2 or V bottom or whatever you want to call it. Let me rewrite the tools that we use in this chapter. So uh, E1 plus W is equals E2, that's always helpful whenever you have a net force acting on something, some work happening, some change in energy from the beginning to the end. So that's a good one. Um, also, we have force parallel times displacement equals the work done. Um, and since it's V, I'll probably use kinetic energy is one half MV squared at some point as well. So that was more of a chapter two uh, focus. All right, to do the math, I'll 
pick one of these equations. I already used that one earlier to find friction. Um, starting with E1 plus W is E2. And again, the uh, box is starting from rest. So let's identify the types of energy. Um, at the top of the ramp, you know, when the box is over here, it looks like it has GPE, but no KE. And at the bottom, it has KE and no GPE if you set your reference height um, here, right? And there's no potential going on. So it might feel natural to write, okay, so this is GPE plus work, and this is KE. Um, this is a little different from how I did it in the other problem, number 23, but this will work. It's just that you have to be careful um, that when you set everything up, you don't also count the work of gravity. So when I think about, okay, which forces actually contribute to my work? When I think about all the work that's being done um, and look at my axis of motion, it looks like there's you know force of gravity in the modified x direction times the displacement plus the force of friction in the uh, still along that same axis of motion parallel to the surface times displacement equals Ke you know plus Gp. But this is not good. This is not correct because I've counted the force of gravity doing some work and Gpe. And again, in lesson 3.03 .03, we said, please don't do that. That's double counting it. You're going to get, um, some numbers more than once if you do that. Um, they are fundamentally deep down the same thing. So you have two options here. You can either count GPE or count the work due to uh, gravity. I'm going to say then let's not count GPE, count GPE after all. Um, and instead we will just say that the starting energy is just zero. Um, there's no Ke and we're not going to count GPE because of this other term that we're using instead. If I plug in the numbers here, so like, uh, you yeah, know, this is the 93.3. Um, the displacement is, how far did it move? It moved 1.5 meters. Uh, friction is 61.9 going in the opposite direction. So negative 61.9. And then the displacement still being uh, 1.5 going the other direction positively. Um, I should find that over here, um, I get like 41.7 joules is the kinetic energy or one half mv squared. Um, I also know that the mass is given as 20. So I could plug in 20 there and solve for v. And if you solve for v, you should get um, 2.17 meters per second is V. And I think that's a reasonable uh, speed for a box sliding down a ramp. 